Ricky, we're gonna sashay our way into some Satchit Max today on Box Mac. to do this show. I want to do this one more than the last one we did. Well, yeah, all things being relative, the last one almost gave us... The barfs. No, I'm seriously ill from the smell uh, of... I am thing. too! I'm not gonna eat this. Oh, no. No, seriously. <laughs> do you need the toy toy? Because <laughs> you need to go to the toy toy. <laughs> oh, f**k. We've done a nor before. A nor before. This is a dump it in and pray Mac, so you just dump it in and let it simmer down and you're done. The only reason not to buy it is because you don't want to cook it. But we did it in like the real early days and yeah. it certainly wasn't a sweet corn mac and cheese with volante pasta. Yeah, which I think are tortellini without the filling. Vola, volante? Uh, this looks like a real, as she, as she said in her letter, I mean a real, you know. Piece of shit. Move over to continental pasta the and sauce, which- boring looking macaroni and cheese I could ever imagine. Well, that's gotta be UK. This came in one of our very first big boxes to Box Mac. This is manufactured 2015. Oh my God. <laughs> but if you notice on the front, the reason it's escaped disposal is because it has a 25 year shelf life. Wow. We still got a good, I don't know, 17 years? Yeah, well, we've eaten into seven of those years. It's almost like pepper pasta. It is pepper pasta. This was an early big box. Yeah, the um, Chicago box. The Chicago box. The Chicago mega box, because it's it's 12 pounds of macaroni and cheese. Is it our goal to cook everything that's in here eventually? I think so. And then finally on the end, we have Golden Wonder, a tasty pasta and sauce. It says, oh, so tasty pasta. There's something about the UK ones where they, it feels like they're leaking and dusty. It's always like broken open. Yeah, well, because it's like paper packaging, which isn't gonna like totally block out the world. Like, oh, this particular unit what, uh, got chewed on by a rat. Well, let me let me ask you this. This is a this is one that that may upset the viewers. People may have noticed like I get some redness on my face. I thought that that was like dandruff you couldn't really get rid of, but it turns out you definitely can. And I've been using a antifungal shampoo, and mm. it's definitely helping. It just surprised me that this, this was always helps existence. With your skin too? Yeah, it's helped with my face skin, and it's helped with the uh, wow. the dandruff. It's it's like thirteen dollars a bottle. You have athlete's foot on your face? I guess I did. So it's good to kind of address that and That's get good. that. I'm glad you found your antifungal shampoo. Yeah, and I, I saw it from a stupid YouTube shorts video of all things. Hey, do hey. you suffer from dandruff? Me too. Try this out. Yeah, exactly. Good, goodbye. Yeah, everything feeds TikToks now. So even if you're not on TikTok, yeah. you're gonna get TikToks. Like I'm such a boomer when it comes to TikTok. Uh, it's a short videos, right? Yeah, but still. You're like, still, I don't understand it. It's a short video. <laughs> I, under I understand it's a short video, but there's like an ecosystem there. That yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like you, am a bit of a contrarian. When it comes to culture, I often go through these waves where something's very popular and I don't pay it any attention. And then 10 years later, I'm like, oh, that reminds me of 10 years ago. Cause I, it was in my <laughs> periphery. Like I remember the first time that happened was like around 2000 when I like started liking the music my mom listened to in the 80s. And like I discovered like my chemical romance like 15 years after the phenomenon. <laughs> I was like, this is actually not bad. We were watching Vine compilations long after Vine was- And that's where I'm headed. And then Vine, I'm like, oh, there was really something there. Mother trucker, dude. That hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. This calls for olive oil as the fat instead of butter. The Nor, king of the Nor. <laughs> King of the North. What a shit show. There's gonna be a new one in August. People are gonna be like, you gonna review it? This is the thing with life now is like, you're always on someone else's schedule. It's like, did you watch the thing? Did you play the thing? Did you, get, there's there's this like cultural FOMO. Sometimes it feels very good to reject it. You're like, nah, I'll play it when I fucking play it. I'll TikTok when I fucking TikTok. <laughs> you didn't see the new Batman? I did, but. It all adds up to a sinister riddle. Hello? Batman speaking. You know what I recently started watching that I know you guys have been enjoying for a long time is Better Call Saul. Yeah, and? I, I love it. I watched it when it first aired and I had like a, a first episode problem. Yes. And the end of the first episode I didn't love. I think a lot of people did. I, I heard from a lot of people who were like, oh yeah, I tried it and I, it was going too slow or something. Yeah, but I, as soon as I got past three, you gotta give it the three episode test and then you're on, I was on board. Instead of contriving like, okay, we gotta get to the big scene in episode seven where they all fight or yeah. something. It's just like, well, if they fight, they fight. If they don't, they don't. Let's just follow the characters. Yeah, follow the journey. Let them develop how they will. And Some dusty cheese for your pleasure. Thanks for uh, navigating this. Oh, sure. They're all gonna be okay. I think they're gonna be very side dishy though. 
And not have much cheese taste. Is side my dishy. Guess. Well, I mean, at what point did macaroni and cheese stop being a side dish? And most of the time when people eat mac and cheese now, it's not as a side dish, it's as the center meal, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. It, it was very much a side dish. I mean, pasta was always a side dish yeah. of any kind. When did that change? When everybody was like, wait a minute, this is the part that is the most delicious. Yeah. But it is kind of weird. You usually don't eat mashed potatoes alone, you know? Yeah, which I would do. You ever have Thanksgiving meal and it's just the stuffing and just the mashed potatoes and you're very pleased with it? And you dump gravy all over both of them? That sounds Excellent. Maybe a little cranberry sauce and I'm good. I throw the meat on there just to kind of be like, it's Thanksgiving. I have had nice moist turkey, but it's pretty rare. I've even had the deep fried turkey experience and it's been dry. That's right. Dads from 2010 couldn't shut up about how good deep fried turkey was. The only time I had deep fried turkey was John made it. In the driveway here. That's still probably the best turkey I've it, ever had. That was very good. I remember everybody was clutching their pearls about him blowing up the house because they <laughs> read a news story or two. For some reason, the gravy that day was- Oh, it was out of this world. We had a Friendsgiving in like March. It was because my work used to give us turkeys every year. We should do that again. You look so forward to Thanksgiving every year. Why not ruin it a little by overindulging in it year round. Turkeys are nice because you can just make a stock from their bones and have turkey leftover, turkey sandwiches. Yeah, that's a good point. In some ways, the- This gives me flashbacks. Does this give you flashbacks? I'm afraid. Okay, let's go. Does it give you flashbacks? Yes. Ugh, my stomach kind of hurts, you guys. <laughs> Is it from the Mac? Maybe. You always get kind of hot on box Mac days. Of course. You're you like, you're like hey, everybody, around. pop all those windows open. Yeah, get it, get that window open. I've, I found that there's some strangeness mm -hmm. in the English language when it comes to talking about temperatures. You heat or warm up. You cool down or off. You never heat off or warm off. You cool off, you cool and off. you cool down, yeah. <laughs> and you heat you and you warm heat down. up. So yeah. heat is up and cool is down, that makes sense. Yes. You turn the AC up or down. <laughs> you turn the AC up or down. You never heat on, and you never heat down, and you never cool up. <laughs> but what if you were getting like ex like increasingly cold? That's not getting cooled up. But the off and on, does that, is that consistent with the same concept? That's how you end up with you know, like Eastern European guys being like, oh man, they I am really cooling up. <laughs> <laughs> it exactly is. That's exactly how that happens. This whole process is, of course, slightly confused by the indecipherable European measurements for everything. 150 milliliters Why are of you, water. Oh, from the... Are yeah. these all UK or what? I'll help. I'm super credit man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have super credit man growing up? No. Okay, that's, oh. that's here. Everybody had a cheapo yeah. commercial in their region. And we had, it was like getting credit on your car purchase. It was a shot of like a bulletin board and a woman goes, help, help, I need to buy a car, but I have no credit. And then a guy in a uh, blow up costume goes, I'll help, I'm super credit man. <laughs> he had an inflatable bar. Yep. It's meant to be like a steel bar and he goes, if I can bend steel with my bare hands, then I can improve your credit faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> the guy who plays super credit man, I think he probably is funny. Probably he's a cop. I think he's like one of these wise asses from this area who's like, let's do super credit, man, for yeah. a commercial. <laughs> Speaking of commercials that are still stuck in my head, 800 588 Empire Today. Today. That still plays. It does. I hear that on the radio. 800-588-2300, Empire Today. Or sail away on the Block Island Ferry. Ferry. Take a trip, it's, it's a carefree time. Sail away on the Block Island Ferry. Take a trip back to carefree times. Me today, Black Island awaits you. Just leave your troubles behind. I, maybe Super Credit Man was Rhode Island. Slash R slash Rhode Island. If I can bend steel with my bare hands, I can improve your credit faster than a speeding <laughs> bullet. And that's all it says. It, then at least to know it exists. It's not Mandela affected. This is called the Mandela effect, named after Nelson Mandela, who people falsely believe died in prison in the 80s. Anyone remember Super Credit Man? Great commercial. That's all it says. <laughs> it's a Yelp review and nobody responded. So I feel like that guy. <laughs> Anyone remember Super Credit Man? Was there ever a commercial where you loved the commercial so much that you were like, I I'm gonna try to tape that off of TV? I think so. And I think I have some of them on my TiVo. That would be a fun thing to do. Go through the TiVo. Uh, I have a TiVo. I last used 2006. Maybe you got a Super Credit Man. <laughs> yeah, maybe Super Credit Man's it's on there. It's possible there's probably a hundred hours of TV on there. For me, there was a line of Bandai Power Rangers toys commercials, and they mm -hmm. were well-produced, and kind of detailed a little Power Rangers story throughout them. 
Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. Do you remember cereal commercials that were somewhat, pardon the pun, serialized? Oh. There were cartoons. Yes, they like, like have a little story. Gotta have it, oh honorable granny. Sugar Bear! Sugar Bear! <laughs> I, I remember one. First of all, it was a good cereal, and I think it's gone now. Apple Cinnamon Cheerios. Oh, it was delicious. Right? Very good. It had little clusters of apple yep. uh, in them. If, yeah, everybody, you can't see everybody. Everybody's going. Yeah, it was good. The mascots were a cinnamon dude mm -hmm. and an apple dude. They were in a race, like a Mario Kart style race. Yeah. Grand Prix of some kind. And they were like, who do you think should win? It was one of those. Yeah. Did Apple and Cinnamon win the Apple Cinnamon Cheerios? Who won? There's another one that was like, should Trix the Rabbit finally get the goddamn cereal? Yes, I remember that. For three awful kids. I say he gets it. I say he's a rabbit. Kids, you can decide. Does the rabbit get the silver bowl of Trix? We need your vote. Balance on boxes. Please vote yes. But in the, the race one, they were like, if you send your postmark proof of purchase, we'll send you flip books that show alternate endings. And they were really nice flip books. Like the animation was gorgeous and it was probably about, you know, I don't know, maybe three seconds of animation. This reminds me of a, one of my favorite series of commercials of all times, a Japanese commercial for a product called Saki Gumi. It's like a 13 commercial cereal. And it's so funny. It's so well done. It's so smart. The name of the commercial is called Long, Long Man. Long, Long Man. I just remember finding out you can send in proofs of purchase. Because th there were a few that were like, proof of purchase and two bucks. Yeah. And that was always the deal breaker. My parents were like, we're not sending We're in. not sending two bucks. We're not sending money. I remember there was one that was like, if you send proof of purchase, you can collect these Goof Troop from the show Goof Troop, mm -hmm. squirty things like bath toys. Yeah, I got them all. That's probably a rare toy if you still had it. Yeah, no, it's long gone. Yeah. Do you look at kids' cereals? Do you buy any for Gloria? Probably not. No, she. Well, she she's still in a phase where she doesn't like milk in her cereal, doesn't want sauce in her pasta. Okay. She wears it like a badge of honor for her identity. She's like cereal, please, and like I always say, no milk. <laughs> Milk was like such an essential part of our, our lives. Like you always had a f heaping full glass of milk with dinner. Yeah, I used to do that too. Yeah, no. Except my sister would drink a big tall glass of orange juice with her pasta. Ew. And I was always like out. The way that we feel about like orange juice with pasta, some people feel that way about like a tall glass of milk with your dinner. I disagree. I think that like just about every dinner goes well with a glass of milk. Spaghetti, you're, yeah, you're pushing it. I'd like a soda, if I'm honest, with, with a spaghetti dinner, a root beer. If I'm gonna be real specific. My grandparents, specifically, my Nana and my great aunt, so they lived together. My paternal grandfather died when my dad was three. Wow. He was raised by both his mom and his aunt, mm -hmm. and they're much older. So she had my dad when she was 40. Yep. And then my dad actually had me when he was 38. My grandmother was 78 when I was born. Holy cow. Yeah. And, and she, she li lived like a fair bit into her life. She too. lived until she was 99, oh, so yeah. we got a lot of time with her. But they lived in this little tiny senior's apartment mm -hmm. together. My Nana and Auntie. They, after having raised seven children or whatever, and they slept in like beds that were kind of next to each other in this little bedroom, mm -hmm. like Bert and Ernie. And they had a little kitchenette and a little living room and a fold out futon yeah. that we would sometimes go over there for sleepovers. Hmm. And they were really big. Now I'm just going to tell you all about my grandparents, sure. if you don't mind. Sure. They would always want to play a board game, old people board games. Uno. Uno? Uno's not bad. Parcheesi. Okay, that's old. Go fish. Mm -hmm. Card games. Yeah. Like anything old you can maid. do. They'd want to play cards. They would uh, you know, teach me the Our Father, and they would always like get some religion in there too. They served ginger ale with absolutely everything. Oh, I love ginger ale. And they had a little pantry like you do. Yep. Around the corner from their bedroom. And it was just this kind of like secret food area. Mm -hmm and they had a jar of cookies. Mm -hmm. I think they went to Building 19. And oh, you know what? Awesome Building 19 memory. Okay, okay. They lived in Swansea. Mm -hmm. And you could walk from there to the Building 19 in Swansea. Yeah. It was about a mile and a half. Yep. And my sister and I, when we were maybe 10 and seven, walked my great aunt, who was 90, to the Building 19 and back. It was like this big story that went out to the whole extended family. They're like, Frankie and Christy walked auntie to Building 19 and back. They're like, she made it. She, and she made it all the way back. And she had to take like a couple of quick breaks and that was it. It's not a great store for and kids. And that was my favorite Building 19 too, it was a that good particular one. one. Yeah, that was probably one of the most like special memories of her. To the seven and 10 year old, it was like, yeah, let's do it. To the 90 year old, she must have had a moment where she's like, am I doing this?
Yeah, are we really gonna do this? <laughs> Am I doing this? And she's like, I, it's just the two of them if I have a problem. Yeah, my grandmother died in 86, so I must have been under six oh, for wow. this memory. And it was of us going to Howard Johnson's and me making a big stink about them wanting to sit in the smoking section because they both smoked. I threw a tantrum and, and we ended up sitting in the smoking section anyway. So. <laughs> and that's the difference yes. between now and then. And my maternal grandmother was a Broadway performer. Really? She had a twin sister. They were beauties. Magician's assistant type, yep. type stuff. Yep. Yeah. She met my grandfather doing that kind of thing. And he was a performer. He, he had this kind of like very classic like actor's look. Yep. He had like a little thin mustache and everything. Not a lot of people in my overall family got bit by like the artistic thing. Yeah. But they're like every now and then somebody. Skipped a generation. Somebody almost. will have the gene. I mean, my my mom is crafty. She makes costumes. Oh yeah, you know, very the, cool stuff. See any of that in Gloria? Yes. She was playing a game yesterday. It was like a chocolate chip cookie store. She called it like Red Cow Cookies. Mm -hmm. And she's like, and I even named it after your show. Okay, this is Gloria's impression of Jareth from Labyrinth. Your eyes can be so cool. Oh, very nice. She doesn't want to not be included. That's yeah, for sure. that's awesome. That one is a soupy mess. Yeah, I saw. You remember, if you go way back, we used to, we had this problem where we would serve it kind of too soon. Yeah, these look okay. They got like the right amount of creaminess. Do you know what's what? Yes. Because God, I don't. I think when we did a bunch of sachets from the Chicago box, yeah. we learned we should have taken the lids off. This one particularly says, turn off the heat and cover. Let stand for 12, 15 minutes stirring occasionally, which I have done. We've been playing Felix the Cat on NES between. Very cool. I really like that game. I'm going to be playing it myself later. This one has a little bit of a smell that I'm a little concerned about. Oniony, dusty. Oniony, dusty. Yeah, no, it's, it smells like a UK Mac. Why don't we start with a plain Mac, which is the Continental. Tastes like Mac and gravy? Yeah, I was going to say onion. And then now that you said gravy, I think you're onto something. It tastes like macaroni in a pleasant gravy. It's really not that bad. It's tasty. There's nothing involved in cheese in this at all. No. This is very typical for UK. They never heard of cheese, even though France is not far. I would make this as a side dish. I like this. It is not macaroni and cheese. It is like a chicken cream kind of it flavor. It totally is. Actually, it would probably go really well on the side of some turkey or it something. It certainly would. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with it. It's not a macaroni and cheese. There's no vomit. No. No theatrics. <laughs> this is the broccoli tasty pasta and cheese. Is that the penny one? The, yeah. Uh, not great. Good pasta. I think actually kind of a nice creamy consistency to yeah. the sauce, but then the sauce itself lands with a thud. Dusty. Very oniony. Very. A little tiny bit of broccoli flavor. Screaming with onion. Like really tiny bit of broccoli. Shouting with onion. If you don't like broccoli, this is the broccoli product for you. It's not offensive though. I'm not like grossed out by it at all. No, no, it's just so onion. Yeah, it, there's nothing cheesy about it. Like make no mistake here, folks. Okay, we have UK friends and yeah. we, you know, What's with the onions? <laughs> I'm gonna do the Joe Biden. We've tried lots of UK Max. What's with the onions? $1.9 trillion relief so far. This is sweet corn mac and cheese with volatani pasta. Like is that pasta We're on the edge of my spoon there or is that some kind of veggie? I don't know. Well, we undercooked it. Yeah, well, it was done. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I mean, I, okay. there's corn in here. No I, sweet corn note at all. Okay, I just got a big old corn. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How'd it feel? corn. So my favorite of these is probably the continental creamy chicken. Definitely. <laughs> it does not say that on the bag, but it's an apt description. Now we need to wait a little while. Dude. Looks like soup. This is the Prepper's Mac. It's very cheesy looking, that's for sure. But it's mostly congealed. It's not soup anymore. No. I just don't know why you'd commit to this style of Mac ever. It's got ham in it too, supposedly. But in a world of, of delicious box Macs, your Cracker Barrels, your Walmarts, your Stop and Shops. Well, this is this is clearly like an emergency food prep Mac, I think. All right, you ready? It smells. Dusty. All, Dusty. Like it's lost all nutrition, but it's still sound. Yeah. Some of our food has passed their best by dates and some may have lost their nutritional value, but they are still sound. Sound. Um, ruh, 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 rejected. Ham and dust is what it tastes like to me. <laughs> Ham and bones. That mac tastes like ham and dust. I think it's more than mild ham. I think it's strong ham. Strong ham. Strong ham, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Go up to strongum. Strongum, yeah. Dust them and strongum. Dust them and strongum. Between the two there. Massachusetts towns. Yeah, right next to each other. My only recommendation here is that one. That one right there. Do you want to see if there's chicken in the ingredients? Nope. But onion. Oh yeah, onion. Oh, yeah. Maybe the onion is giving us a chicken flavor? No, it's just cheese and, and onion. So that was the only one that was even remotely worth buying, but none of them are macaroni and cheese. No. We don't know what the next one is, but we now we have to go back to the Hall Max, pick some more out. Next time, 
on Boxmark. Sail away on the Black Island Ferry. Take a trip back to carefree times. Me today, Black Island awaits you. Just leave your troubles behind. Come sail away with us to the beauty of Black Island. 